been back using NeoVim for a few weeks now and I've learned a few things along the way which I thought would be worth sharing with you. So let's take a look. So the first one is copying and moving lines. Now there's a common scenario where you need to copy a few lines from one place to another. You may already know that you can do things with Vim where you do um, colon, line number, comma, line number, and then the operation. So you could do like T and then full stop and that's going to move those lines to your current cursor location. And if you wanted to move them instead of copying them, you could use an M dot at the end instead. Well, that all works pretty good whilst you can see the things that are on the screen. But for you, if you've got something that's way up top of your file that you need to bring down, then you can actually solve the problem in a similar way, but using marks. Suppose you're down near the bottom of the file and there's something up at the top that you want to grab and insert here on the line that you're currently on. Well, if you mark the position at that you are at with M and then a, a letter. I tend to just use A just because it seems logical to choose the first letter. So MA, that marks that current line. Then you can skip up the file to wherever it is that you want to, to grab, whatever section that you want to grab. Then what you can do is you can just use the colon, full stop because that's the line that you're currently on, and then two, and again, single quote to move it to a mark, and then the, the mark reference that you're using, so A in this case. I don't know why, I don't know if it's because I'm used to using visual editors for so long, but I still find a basic like file navigator a massive pain in the ass with NeoVim and Vim. I do, I'd do. i like to use NetRW as much as possible just because it means I don't have to load another plugin um, in, but even getting that to display and then go away again is, seems like a massive pain in the ass. What I've found the best solution to this in the meantime is with NeoVim, you get a command which is L explore, and you can then map that to a key. So I've got it set to leader E, and leader E brings me in the, the net RW window, and then you can toggle it on and off with that. I had a situation, because I'm using um, computer at home, computer at work, where my work machine sat behind a corporate firewall, was having difficulty. Um, I'd installed LSP servers. They were in a different location on that machine than the one at home. Couldn't figure out why. Um, but it turned out I could do. You can do a little mapping, mapping a little bit of logic in your init.lua to let you know which machine that you're on and load things accordingly. And you can solve this problem in your init lua with environment variables. And you might use them for a completely different reason. That was just the use case that I had. So from your shell, you could export a variable. So for example, in my ZSH, I'd added export machine equals work. And then on my home one, I could either leave that blank or put you know, machine equals home. And then you can check that by running, before you do anything, you can check that that's set up right. If you start a new shell, do echo, uh, dollar sign, machine, capital letters, you should get back the one that you're on. And then in your init Lua, you can add this little bit of logic, which says we make a local variable, environment machine, obviously you can call that whatever you want, sausages, bacon, doesn't really matter. And it's going to be equal to os dot get env, so we're going to go fetch that variable, capital letters, the name of the variable, you don't put the dollar in there, it's just the name of the variable, and then you can just do some basic control flow, so you can say, if this variable is this, then do this, otherwise do this other thing, so you can see there that I'm just setting a different path for my LSP server in one environment than in the other, mega handy, I'm sure there's going to be plenty of situations where I find that useful in the future. Because I don't know Lua, I've found having a, a formatter for the Lua language really helpful, even when I'm just writing config for NeoVim. So the one that I was working on, sorry, the one that I was using originally, turned out to be pretty old and full of security vulnerabilities. So somebody suggested to me that Style Lua was a good one to go for. So you can get Style Lua installed now. You used to have to do it manually, but you can just install it with Brew now if you're on Mac, and obviously it'll be easier on, on Linux anyway. But once you've installed Style Lua, you can then just set that in your config. I'm using formatter to format my code, um, but it's super quick. So there's just a little bit of config for Lua there. I'm setting the indent width and the indent type, but obviously that can be whatever you want from the options. Um, and it works peachy. Can't recommend that one high enough, and it just lets you see where you're going wrong. So I'm using Lua line to do uh, for my status bar in NeoVim. And one of the things that I wanted to do is have the file name centered in the middle of the screen rather than the left or the right. And it turns out it's really easy to do. I'd asked the question on the, the Lua GitHub account and it turns out it's as easy as writing a little function to just center that. 
by the same token, one of the things that I'd like to get into is being able to use a, I wanted to have a function that will give me the word count when I'm in a markdown file. Now I've just started this in very basic terms and there's actually a built-in Vim function for getting the word count. You can just create a local function of whatever you want and then stick that into your Lua file, uh, which I thought was pretty cool. So I need to build the extra logic around this now so that it only only loads and returns something when it's in a, a text or a markdown file. When you're setting various plugins up, you often get that situation where you're pressing the key and nothing's happening or the wrong thing's happening. So there's an easy way of checking which thing is, is mapped to which key. And I'm sure this is an age old thing that lots of people knew. I didn't know it, maybe you don't know it. Well, what you can write is echo. So this is inside Vim. You're doing echo space map arg. So what's mapped, um, open your brackets, capital, uh, or rather, sorry, your first argument is the key you want to check what's set against it. And then your second argument is the mode. So in this case, I'm using V for visual, but you can use I for um, insert or any of the other ones. Now I, I write a lot of documentation, um, obviously blog posts, things of that nature. Um, and one thing I didn't realize that you could do out of the box with Vim, with NeoVim, is you can have fenced code blocks. It's just a case of passing it to your your VimRC or your init.lua. You can see here, I've just got this option set where I've got G dot markdown fenced languages, and then you just pass it a map in Lua of the file names that you want to enable fenced code blocks for. And it's just as simple as that. You save that in your config. Next time you're editing a file of that nature, you do your three back ticks to, to give you a fenced code block. And then you just pass in the name of the language at the top of the first code block ticks. Um, and you can see that that now gives you gives you syntax highlighted code. One of the great little features of Sublime Text, which incidentally you should totally check out my course on Sublime Text. That aside, one of the things I like about Sublime Text is when you search for a file, you can add a colon as you're fuzzy searching, colon to the end of the file, type in a number, and that's going to then, when you press enter, that's going to take you to that file and that line number on that file. And I wondered if it was possible to replicate that in some way with Telescope in NeoVim. So I asked the question on um, the Gitter support for Telescope, and within about three minutes, um, Fabian David Smith had come back and given me a basically a cut and paste solution to the problem. So this means now I've got this chunk of code here, I've got that in my init.lua, and that means that just like in Sublime Text now, I can do the find files in Telescope, add a colon, put the line number in that I'm interested in, I press enter, and I'm straight at that point in the file. Now this one is stretching things a bit in terms of NeoVim, the title of this video. This one's just about the terminal, nothing to do with NeoVim actually. I thought it was to do with NeoVim at first, but it's just a part of Kitty, which is the terminal that I'm using. Well, it turns out that if you want to stick an emoji in your text, you can do that really easy in Kitty. And so you use your OS based shortcut to bring up your emoji picker and Kitty actually gives you its own little one there in the terminal. So you just use the key combo there to select the emoji you're interested in and bang, it's like that, it's in your code or terminal. Now it, it isn't searchable and it isn't the full list of emojis, but it's a it does fine for all the use cases I've come across, but I thought it was a handy thing worth knowing in Kitty. In Sublime Text, I'm used to using the arithmetic features, which are fairly accessible ways of manipulating code with numbers and arithmetic. And I wondered if there was a, a similar functionality in Vim, and obviously there is. It was just a case of figuring out how to get it singing. I'll give you a scenario. Suppose you've got a JSON file here, and you've got a bunch of dummy data, and it's got the same string of text multiple times, and we want to increment that based on the number of times down the file it appears. I asked about this on the Stack Exchange, and thankfully somebody provided a solution very quickly, like doing a loop, um, you're just writing it in a different language. So what you can do is you can do, you can set up colon, set up a variable, so we're gonna let index be equal to zero. Then we're gonna pipe that into the next bit, which is we're gonna use the global command, and we're gonna search for that string in question, so one.jpg. Then we're going to say we're going to increment our variable based on that. So we're going to go let index be plus equals to one. So this thing is going to add on one each time it finds it. And then the final part is we're going to pipe that into the new string that we want to add into there. So we're going to search and we're going to do we're going to make it equal to the index and then 
we're going to concatenate that the full stop period um, and then uh, the file extension which in this case is .jpg and the forward slash it's not the sort of thing you're going to remember off the top of your head every time but it isn't the sort of activity that you're going to want to do every day I don't imagine but it's worth knowing that you can do that easily with a bit of cut and paste of manipulation so obviously your IDX equals zero you can change that to a different number if you want to start at a different point and you could increment by different amounts by tweaking that as well. Another thing I discovered by complete accident is the fact that you can do jumping around the file by file number, sorry, by line number, by using the arrow keys. You don't have to use H and J. I'm on a Colmac keyboard here, um, and I don't tend to, the H, J, K, L isn't an awful lot used to me in that scenario because the K is, at the, is below my J, so it's a bit of a, a mind mash unless you're used to flight sims to have one above and one below. You can just as easily type the file number 55, press your up arrow, five, down arrow. That works just the same. You don't have to use the H and J. No idea it worked that way. I was pleasantly surprised. You can operate on multiple non-consecutive lines using the, the global command. I find this useful if you've got something like a fairly large JavaScript or TypeScript file. You've got consoles, logs in there, and you want to get rid of them all in one go. You can do colon G slash name of the string that you're after, so whether that's console or image or whatever it is that you're looking for, forward slash, and then you can pass norm or normal mode to it to tell it that you want to execute something on it. So in this case, the shortcut I'm using here is GCC, which is the shortcut that I've got for commenting a line out using the commenter plugin. But obviously you could pass whatever you want to it to manipulate that line. And obviously you probably realize already that you can delete all those in one go without entering normal mode. You can just do G, search for the string D, and that's going to delete all instances of those across that line. Another situation I had was I needed to add a line to multiple JSON files, an extra line, a particular line numbering point. And I wondered if there was a way of doing that in one swoop across multiple files. Now, I'm just going to demo this on like four JSON files just to, to show you the technique, but obviously this will become more and more useful and time saving the, the greater number of files you need to do this on. The beginning of this technique involves you needing to have your files in the quick fix list. So however you want to do that normally, I'm using telescope here, I'm searching for the files, selecting them and adding them into my quick fix list. So you can see there, I've got these four files at the bottom, these JSON files. And what I want to do is add an extra line at like line five, and obviously that could be whatever you need it to be. And then I want to add a string to it. And when, in this case, that status not started, but obviously whatever you want to add doesn't matter. Now I found a couple of ways to do this, both through asking the question on the Vim Stack Exchange. Um, I probably prefer the second one, but I'll, I'll, I'll show you both. So the first way of doing it is we use the CFDO, which is the quick fix do command. And then we tell it to execute the thing that we then pass to it as a string. So it's going to execute the thing in these single brackets. So I'm passing in normal mode to go into normal mode and then doing 5G to get to the fifth line, capital O to stick a line above. And then I'm using the string that I want to add to it. So in this case, it's this JSON string status not started. Close that with my single quotes. So I don't have to because I'm using two sets of quotes there, I don't need to do the escaping. So then I do the single quote to close the part that I'm sending to the execute command. And then we pipe that into update just so it saves those files at the same time. Obviously, if you wanted to look at them first, you could leave off the update. So that one works fine. That's that's pretty good. We can sort of understand what's going on there because you're basically just passing in what you would normally type in the keyboard to do that on one file. But the other one that I thought was pretty interesting and I had no idea, there's this append command that you can just pass. So in this case, we do CFDO again, because again, we want to operate across those files and we're going to call, and then we're going to use this append function. We're going to open the function. The first argument is the line number. So we're going to append after line four, and then you pass in the string that you want to append, close the function. And that also does the same thing. So again, two sort of very programmatic ways of, of doing something and saving a lot of time doing them across multiple files. I remember my first stint, with Vim, working away doing something, and I accidentally, I think I was trying to increment a number, pressed Control and Z, and panicked when everything disappeared. And after that point, when I found out what had happened, the fact that I'd suspended Vim, I remember putting something in my Vim RC to make that never happen again. 
this time around with this spell with Vim, a, a questioned all that obviously is useful for some reason. So why? And I've, I've come to embrace suspending Vim and I've actually found that Control Z now is a great feature because it lets me just drop down to the terminal, do something there that I need to, and then jump back with FG for foreground. So FG foreground brings it back. Control Z takes your Vim away, suspends it, and then FG brings it back. Um, I'm finding it most useful for Git commands, but obviously in this case I'm just showing you stupid Linux graphical things that everybody puts on. If that was useful, please give it a like. Subscribe if you haven't. I'm going to accumulate another bunch of these tips probably in the next few months and maybe do another of these videos. So if that's something you'd be interested in, please let me know. Otherwise, I'll see you again sometime.